Hi, welcome to Supply Chain Systems videos on planning and scheduling. In the first seven or eight videos, we hope to show you the concepts of planning and scheduling relative to more of a holistic look at your supply chains and how you would use some tools in the future in order to better manage those supply chains but most of this is is really targeted towards the concepts that you should understand when you're trying to plan and schedule your supply chains so let's just dive right into it and see what we can uh, help you out as far as better understanding of planning and scheduling the primary subject of today's video is about visualization or the visibility of your supply chain using a tool. Within that whole concept of visualization, there are a number of issues I'd like to discuss with you on how to better manage all of the data and the situations about your supply chain. The first one is about time bucketization. This means where we're taking all of the different types of demand that may be occurring that you would refer to as a forecast and putting it into monthly periods of time. Most organizations have at least some form of monthly forecasts that they lay out for the next year, two years, three years or more and they look at these blocks of information to help them manage all of the numbers that might have occurred otherwise. When you start to look at vast amounts of information you need to categorize it. And the first categorization that is used are time buckets. And this helps to make it easier for us to understand and to visualize and even to remember as we discuss uh, our situations within our businesses. Now forecasts that may be good enough to look at uh, your information in that level of time. But when we start to break down you know, planning our production in raw materials uh, that we have to purchase, we have to have more discrete information. So it's necessary to break that information down into weekly buckets. And this is uh, what I find is a much more common way uh, when you get down to that level of uh, planning and scheduling uh, at the plant level or even at the work center level we have to break our information down a little bit more refined so in this particular model we're looking across the x-axis you're seeing that we're going out as far as uh, 21 weeks uh, of information but it's giving us a visualization over time of you know what is happening here so our first dimension here is time and we're looking at weekly buckets. The next set of categories are along the vertical axis here. We have demand, inventory, and production are the major categories. Now we can break those down even further or as much as we like. The first category here on the vertical axis is demand. Demand can be forecast, customer orders. They can be replenishment orders from other warehouses. They can be uh, in internal demand coming from other plants. And we think of this demand in multiple ways. And one of the things that we all have to do over time is we have to prioritize the different types of demand because we may not be able to respond to all of it, all the different categories, as well as you maybe you have more forecasted demand than you have capacity to fill in any one time period. But the point is still remains. We have a vast uh, amount of information that we categorize as demand that's going to put uh, a driver on our production scheduling so that we're going to have to at some point recognize a number that's going to drive that uh, period of time and we're breaking down our demand into weekly buckets here. The second category is inventory, 
and you can see we have two types of uh, inventory one is our ending inventory for the month and we have a safety stock that's being calculated in the ending inventory we start with our beginning inventory as of today and we roll forward calculating what we expect it to be based upon our demand that's going to draw down that inventory and our production that's going to increase the inventory the safety stock is more of a target type of an inventory where we are trying to understand that if we go below this level this is going to start to impact our customer service level that we may run out prematurely or something could happen where we can't respond fast enough so safety stock is a necessary thing to understand if you want to have high levels of customer service production has another set of dimensions to it we have our current plan that we've either committed to a plan that we're we'd like to see how this number is going to play into the future we might have some production orders that have been committed to already and we have uh, people working on setting up the equipment for it so we have some scheduled production potentially that's already been executed but maybe not has not have been started yet uh, but you know once we have committed to a production schedule we probably have ordered raw materials so money is being spent so it's important to understand that we may have some production orders already sitting out there that we've committed to and the production plans into the future would be in addition to that what we already have committed to so that's giving us an idea of what this chart is up at the top I find that time goes by very fast when you're making these videos and I don't want to make them too long so I'm going to try to go through some of these other areas a little bit quicker here okay so with that said the one of the points I want to make about having this kind of uh, a setup here you can see that we put together a lot of consolidated information that is presented up in the chart at the top we have our graph here we have some of the parameters that are brought forward from other sheets about this particular uh, product so you can see down over here this is information as relative to this particular product and this would all change as we go and shift to another product we brought in inventories here from all the different locations but that's being totalized and up here brought forward up here to our beginning inventory so we're bringing a lot of information in here and what I refer to as a control panel and this control panel allows us to visualize what's going on and right here along with all of that we have all the the buttons and the tools and the numbers that we can change in order to satisfy this information and hopefully we don't have to leave this one screen in order to try to see uh, how we can solve the problem of coming up with our best plan and schedule but in order to do some of this behind the scenes we have to go and look at other tables of information and Excel has lots of other features to them just to point out a few of those we'll go to another table here and we can see that we have let's just expand some of this we have lots of information this is our parameter sheet that is about all of our different products and each product has its own set of codes it has its own parameters for planning and scheduling we have different lead times different safety stocks we might want to might want to have uh, some of these are retail products some of these are more wholesale type products but what we can do with this in order to make it more manageable we can use some features of Excel so let's just look at filtering filtering is where we take a column and we can look at the different categories that are there in this particular case I have these are active products or not so active so I'm gonna say I wanna only look at the ones that are my uh, ones that are active discounting all the blanks and discounting anything that's a uh, that's not active in this particular situation so when I do that you can see what happens to the chart it collapses just to those items that have the selection that I picked now going back let's turn that back on another way of doing the same thing we have something called outlining 
and I can highlight different categories. I Here again, I have my retail products up at the top, and if I don't want to see all of my, uh, more of my wholesale type products, or food service in this case, what I can do is I can collapse this thing, and now I can only get the ones that are there. But you see what is left, I collapse just the other products, but I still have a bunch of blank rows, but I, and I still have the ends over here. So in this case, if I still want to use these in combination, I can get rid of the ones that are still ends, and now it collapses it even further. So these are just some of the standard features that are within Excel that helps you to manage your data, look at it, and hone in on what uh, precisely you, you, you want to look at. Much easier than many of the you know, large business systems as far as managing data. That's why we love Excel and we uh, use it uh, regardless of how many sophisticated tools that might be out there otherwise. We like to be able to manage it ourselves and deal with it. And all that's available to you while using this tool. Uh, nothing is uh, locked out or anything like that. Okay, let's move on to the next area. I won't take the time to illustrate pivot tables, but just a quick word on it. It's similar to outlining and filtering in that you can slice and dice your data sim similar to uh, business intelligent tools where they have things called cubes where you can then uh, realign your data and look at it in different viewpoints. But uh, you can also do the same thing here with your forecasts and your profitability. So uh, you can use uh, the pivot tables in order to take vast amounts of data and to aggregate it, slice and dice it, and we'll give you some different viewpoints of it. The other thing about visualizing the data is, is targeting a particular problem. And what you see here on this particular chart, or this whole thing, is you're looking at a product view. Everything you want to know about this product is here on this one page. So if you want to have other views, you can go to things like a um, like a capacity view and look at an individual um, work center or a, a plant or a group of plants and you can have a viewpoint of just those uh, aspects or perspectives of your operation. Uh, this is just an example of, a, of a, another one of the tools within this particular program that is looking at our supply chain from a capacity view and we're going to do a capacity uh, optimization with this one sheet. But this is targeting a particular problem, a particular question, and we set up all the information to come in and consolidate it so you can look at it, you can manipulate it here, and then you can solve it right here. So the, the important point here is targeting the question that you're trying to answer and doing it without flipping around a lot of screens. You shouldn't have to do that. We can make it so that all the information you need to make your decisions are on the one screen and the way you solve it is also on the same screen. Another nice little feature of Excel that we employ here is the thing called conditional formatting. So let's give you a quick illustration of what that looks like. I'll get rid of one of the production schedules on this particular uh, product. And you can see what happened up here immediately. You can see the graph went down. I'm below my safety stock out in the future. And even when I go far enough out, I am actually stocking out. And you can see what happens here is any time I go into the orange, I'm below my safety stock. And when I'm below... Uh, zero, I have no more product left in that time period that I expect at this time. I actually will have it going red. So we're using conditional formatting to really highlight the problem areas. Maybe it's so far out you don't really care at this point, uh, so you don't act on it. But if you want to make this a complete schedule, what we can do is either just reschedule the whole thing and see what happens, and voila it brought up our production schedule to a level where it's always above our safety stock and we're trying to maintain a 95 percent plus customer service level. Of course we can say well maybe we don't have enough raw material that we expect or our cash flow is not good enough 
I can drop this down a little bit and see if I can drop it out a little bit and see how much it hurts me. And you can see I dip into my safety stock a little bit. I can save a little bit of money. For the most part, I'm saving most of uh, my customer demand, uh, not uh, pissing off too many of our customers. But you can see we can go out here and we can move some of that production out into the future and still have a pretty good schedule. So the point is, very visually, you can see what's going on here and we're using our conditional formatting to help us visualize that situation. Finally, as you can see I've already been doing here, we're using some of our ability to change uh, what's going on and we're actually managing this through our control chart, the different situations, the different scenarios, until we find something that we're happy with from all the perspectives that we're aware of. So I can change my increment down here Instead of making it 7,000, let's make it something like 12,000. We'll save that increment right here. Reschedule, and you'll see what happens to the schedule here. We're making it much fewer times, okay, but larger quantities, so our overall average inventory is going to be higher, but we're not going to have as many setups, and um, you know, you're going to have a higher cycle stock as a result. So this is giving you a perspective of how well you're planning and how well you're trading off. Now this may be a necessary situation because you're doing contract manufacturing and they require you to make larger quantities for their own efficiency. You know, they're telling you things that you should probably be thinking about for your own production. We might kick around our production people uh, to make things uh, very frequent, but the problem is they're losing capacity when they do that. So there's a real trade-off of how frequently you make the same product over and over again and you have to come up with a good balance between that frequency and the overall inventories that you're carrying as a result of that and obviously if you have a product that is going to have shelf life issues you have to keep that inventory down and you have to make it more frequent all right that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this session and look forward to seeing you again in our next one